Hey everybody, how we doing today? So today's videos are going to be about these guys, my underwater cameras. Now, if you've been watching some of my last few videos, you'll have seen that I've been inserting some underwater footage there just to spice things up. Uh, seeing the fish kind of swimming around, seeing the bait, tacking that bait, and jumping and so forth. Uh, so I figured I'd take some time and kind of walk you through the couple of cameras that I use, uh, show you how they work, give you some pluses and minuses, and then maybe uh, if you're interested in utilizing them as well, maybe it'll help you out. So anyways, let's check these guys out. Now the two cameras that I utilize are the Waterwolf 1.1 and then this is the Olimbros. The Waterwolf 1.1 is the second version. There's also a 1.0 version. Uh, it retails for around 150 new. Uh, it is rated at 720 uh, resolution. Then this is the Olimbros. It retails for around $50 and its advertised uh, rating is 1280 by 720. Now some key characteristic differences that I've come up with are one is the Waterwolf is has a bit of a slimmer profile than the Alimbros. Uh, another major difference is the Waterwolf has sound where the Alimbro does not. Although the sound that you get from the Waterwolf is not very good for using as a uh, full-on camera. It's kind of like utilizing a GoPro in a dive housing and the audio is kind of muffled because of that because they are made for underwater. However, it does give some kind of weird sounding thrashing noise when a fish bites, which is does add to the bit of excitement. So the Waterwolf has that as well. Um, the Alimbros has a little LED light that you could turn on and activate. I'm doubtful that it would do much in actual fishing stuff, but I mean, it would illuminate in pitch dark and maybe shafts put a little bit of light out there where the, uh, the water wolf does not have any type of lighting. Uh, the water wolf has the capability of being weighted so that you could put insert different weights in it to allow it to sink. Uh, sit at a different angle or to float where the Alimbros does not have that and I found that I could actually use this as my bobber in place of an actual bobber when I'm live baiting uh, like the pinfish. Now the rigging is actually fairly similar. I mean there's not really too much difference. Um, you have a front contact point and then a rear contact point so your main line would go to the front of the camera and then you would tie off to the back of the camera. Um, the closer that, the shorter the leader that you have, the better footage that you'll get for uh, any fish that comes up to bite your lure. If it's too far out, um, the bait tends to get out of view and you might miss the action. And it's a lot clearer if you have that uh, up close. Uh, the water wolf, this, the uh, Limbros is just set. It's just got swivels on the front and the back. You just tie it to your line, main line, leader, and that's pretty much it. Uh, the water wolf has a little bit uh, different setup. Um, it's a little bit more high tech, I guess you'd call it. Uh, got a basic safety cap you can take off. And then it's got this slider system. So it's got an actual mount. So to release it, you'll take the uh, plastic up and then the part that hooks up to your main line and your uh, leader are uh, basically detaches from the actual camera. So that allows you to remove the cover easier for getting to the internal part where you're going to uh, have access to the memory card and then the record switch, which is basically an on off switch, but basically it means when it's on, it's recording. When you turn it off, it's not recording. Uh, there's a little light on the inside that'll start blinking when it's recording and then it also uses that same light when you're charging it. You plug in the micro USB cord to it, uh, stays red and then once it's charged it goes off. So that's basically it. The waterproof is, is basically just these two little O-rings um, on the cap and using the handy dandy little pin cap there that'll help you to uh, leverage that cover on. And then you want to, whoops, make sure you twist it on and make sure that those O-rings don't bind and then that you give it a nice quarter turn so it seats perfectly along the edge there and make sure it's waterproof. And then to mount it, just reverse. It's got that little wire that you want to slip in there. Uh, once it is flush, 
then you could push the insert in and then pull out the wire part and that locks it in there so that it can't go anywhere. And then you'll uh, attach your main line to the front part of it and then to the back is where you'll have your leader and then that'll go out to your lure or bait. The Loom Bros is a little bit different is that it's basically two sections screwed together and you access it by basically just twisting it apart. And that'll give you access to the control panel. Okay, where you've got the memory card slot, you've got the you micro USB port for charging. Then you have three buttons. One is for the light, one is for the turning, uh, uh, powering on, powering off, and then one is for the uh, actual recording. Um, when you screw it back together again, I'm guessing you could probably add weights. It looks like it gives you enough room that you could add BBs or something, lead weights, to help it uh, sink a bit if you wanted to. But otherwise, it just screws together, and these are the O-rings that keep it uh, waterproof. So pretty basic. Like the other one, you just got to make sure that those O-rings are in good condition and that it's snug, but you don't want it to tighten it so much you can't open it again. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's talk about the practical applications for these underwater video cameras. Now, okay, before people start clicking off, you might be the ones, well, I don't have a YouTube channel. What I care about your underwater cameras for? Click, well, hold on, okay. I actually have a good reasoning for that and I've been actually learning a lot since I've been kind of delving into this a little bit, but for the, the person that does have a YouTube channel or you're into some sort of tough professional videography or photography and uh, you're looking out ways to up your game a bit, okay? That's kind of what these do, okay? And I've talked about this into my earlier videos about that cinematic style, how to get that, oh, ah, type of thing on your videos. Really what it comes down to is angles, all right? <laughs> Lots of lots of angles, okay? Keeping that viewer's attention by breaking things up. Unlike this video where I'm sitting here talking to you, blah, 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 nothing's happening, nothing's changing, it's just me talking, all right? A lot of people kind of just like, all right? But if you start moving things around, changing it up, even though I might be spewing the same stuff, that angles change things up in their mind and then it keeps them paying attention. Same thing with these underwaters. I really liken these to uh, drones. Exact same thing, drones, right? Uh, a lot of people now are mainstream using drones to do that, to get that other perspective. Because like right now, for example, for me on the kayak, uh, what do I have? I could place the camera in front of me, facing me, so you're watching me talk like this. Or a lot of times I'm using it on my uh, cap, and just facing out and you get that first person perspective or on your chest, or you get one of the boom poles and then you have it swung out and at different angles that it's looking at you. So you got 360 view in different places there. All right, and that's great, okay? And you start editing those all those different cuts in, it keeps your video up and exciting, keeps people thinking, their brains moving, so they don't click off on you, okay? With the advent of the drones, as well as the underwater cameras, what you get, another angle from up in the sky, all these up above aerial views. And that's what these underwater cameras do. It gives you a different perspective. Now you get that perspective of what a fish sees and that's almost even more unique. I would liken it to, if you start doing a lot of videos with this kind of stuff, it's really like when the drones first came out and it was like, wow, that's really cool. That guy, you can see that guy fishing. <laughs> and that's that guy that's making the video fishing way down there and you can see everything, okay? Nowadays, eh, not so much. It kind of gets a little bit kind of monotonous. Now everybody's seeing it, a lot of people have them. So it's not that impactful. But it's all about that perspective and this using one of these just gives you another different option. Now, the negative side of these cameras, a couple of things, the requirements of them are can make it a little bit more tough. One, um, it's similar to like the GoPros, is that they only really work really well in very good lighting, 
bright light conditions. Uh, they Once you start getting into lower lights, then the quality starts dropping a bit. Same for these cameras. These are very basic cameras. These are like maybe second generation GoPro quality, 720Ps. So you're definitely losing out if you don't have that really good lighting. Plus, clarity, water clarity, huge as well, okay? Uh, if you have any type of murkiness, your, your visibility is just drops incredibly quickly. On top of that, okay, then you start lo losing any coloration and you lose fine detail and it tends to be more of a darker atmosphere and then again, we were talking about that earlier, your quality starts going down. That's why here in the Florida Keys, we have top-notch quality water, okay, but we realistically only have that really pristine gin quality clear water in summertime. That's why throughout most of the year, you don't see me utilizing this underwater cameras. Mainly it's just during that summer times when the winds drop down to nothing. We have a lot of sun, all that sediment because there's not a lot of water flow tends to settle. And then we have that real good quality gin clarity water. Then I can really start bringing these out and I use them for the few months that we have the good quality. And after that, you never see them again. All right. And a little bit of side note, they're a hassle <laughs> in the butt. Trying to full fish with these big old black gloves of plastic, okay? Fish are smart, all right? And having these attached to your line and not having a huge leader, it, it may take some real work. And then you're playing with a $150 lure, basically, and a, even a $50 lure, that one snag, one barracuda one bad knot one bad nick in your line and gone 150 dollars just gone so that's why you see me whining about it all the time when i'm fighting these fish like oh please don't break please don't break because it's not even that maybe you have some awesome footage some just amazing footage okay but then your camera swims away never to be seen again it doesn't help you because it's not recording to your computer or whatever it's on that chip on this camera so if you don't retrieve this you don't get it back but uh, that's kind of a gist of the benefits a little bit of negatives about them now for you guys that don't have a youtube channel or not doing videography or anything there is some important stuff that you can gain by utilize these and i really started picking these up when i've been using it these last uh, this last year i did i found out some stuff last year's but this year's i definitely was uh, picking up some things so i'm going to kind of cut in the video of the tarpon i was fishing for and got the full fight of it you can take a look at it um i'll cut in the parts that i the cherry pick the parts because that's another thing if you're going to use these things for your videos especially on youtube you don't want to use a lot of it it would be just like having five minutes of drone footage people would be like <sighs> after 30 seconds that's why most people just use it for their intro and then that's it. Same with these, you kinda wanna just cut in the good bits and then just like you're editing stuff on your normal videos, cut out all the mixed middle stuff. But uh, take a look at this tarpon that I caught and I'm gonna cut in the, the things, not really related just to that tarpon, but the things that I will utilize it for beyond just the YouTube video. what's down there all right so that first part go to your local fishing spots that you normally hit yeah you kind of have a gist of where you like to fish and you've been getting some bites maybe you have your fish finder that gives you a bit of a graph to see the bottom breakup but you drop one of these cameras down and just run through that area that you generally fish go back run it on your computer you see what specific structure is down there. You see where those fish are gonna be and it's firsthand versus just kind of getting a general idea about it. Now that is awesome. Okay. <laughs> now that's what I call a bite. And that's a lot of times I really didn't notice this. I know 
when I would get bites because it would always be that tarp and jumping in the air and splashing. I wouldn't even need to look at the pole. I would just hear that cannonball splash and know that I had a tarpon on, but that's what it is. Those, those tarpon are coming up after that bait, just like a shark attacking a seal. They know it's a, a very quick bait and they have to be very quick at it. So they just propel up after them. I, and, and the, the things that that changed for me is that I shortened up my leaders before I was running a lot longer leaders so that I can keep that bait down closer to where the fish are. But then I saw that and I'm thinking, well, maybe it's better to have that leader shorter so that bait is sitting up higher so that they can still see, but they can go after that momentum and it's not that down at their eyesight where they're sitting around and they can eyeball it and they see the leader, the hook, and just like, no, not fooling me. But if it's up here, they just see that bait. They don't see the line and the hook and then they just go after it. The second thing that important thing that I figured out was is just how important that current is. All right. If you've got that bait suspended with no current and it is just sitting in one spot, especially if it's down low where the tarpon are, they're going to swim up to it and they might like think, Ooh, great breakfast. But then they're like, wait a second. That's not right. And then you start seeing them eyeballing it. And this is especially what I learned on my last one where I had a bunch of tarpon coming around schools of them coming and just kind of checking out the bait and saying, no, thank you. And passing it along. All right. And so what I learned about that, yeah, I want to utilize current whenever I can. And I generally try to do that. But in slack current, what my offset is, is downsize my leader. Okay. I might run 60 when the, the bait's moving like that, but when in still calm water, when there's not a lot of water movement, I'll go down to 30 pound. Okay. And that keeps that line a little bit less, maybe even go down to a smaller hook, basically downsize everything to be a little bit more inconspicuous to those fish because they can check it out a lot more and be a lot more wary about it. Now, during the middle fight, the bulk of the time frame, okay, that part of it is why I run 60 pound or 80 pound leader and not 20 pound because you'll see that leader just getting rubbed against the face, against the body, against the tail. It turns, it runs into it, turns the other way, it runs into it, it's rolling on it. And the abrasiveness of those uh, tarpon in their cartilage is just so rough. And the long term it takes to break down a tarpon, 20 minute fight or whatever. Uh, you just got to kind of lead her up if you uh, plan on actually landing one. So those are just some of the key things that I picked up by just watching a couple of videos of a fish's perspective. And I mean, I'm a tarpon guy. I catch a lot of tarpon, but just a couple of videos of just watching what really goes on down there has changed my strategies just like that. Uh, and that'll do it for any type of species that uh, if you start getting that fish's perspective um, and you'll see how much that might be uh, helpful in regards to uh, upping your fish catches. So anyways, I uh, hope you found that uh, helpful, interesting, enjoyable. But uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.